Okay, so um, cranial nerve one. It, when it is lesioned, the consequence is anosmia. And um, acquired anosmia can happen either because it's, it's traumatically lesioned, as in the case of, say, whiplash, or it can also happen because it's um, essentially chemically lesioned by, uh, say, o overuse of a, of a no or, or a bad nose spray. Um, there was recently a case where one of the nose spray companies um, was found liable for a group of patient, a group of individuals getting anosmia. Uh, so, so it can happen, and 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 that is a, a version of what's called acquired anosmia. A person who can smell now can't smell. There is a smaller group, a much much smaller group of people who are congenitally anosmic. They never have um, a sense of smell. Now, these two experiences are really, really different, and, and we're going to see this time and again, that the experience of a congenital condition versus a, an acquired condition, these are different experiences. With a congenital condition, um, you, you sort of never know that you, you were missing something, and it's, it, it can have less of an impact. Um, now, that said, the thing that you're missing is something that you know everybody else has. Uh, so it, that does have, that, that, that is not exactly a comfortable uh, situation. And, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, with the case of acquired anosmia, there is, um, there, there's a change in, in, in a person's experience. So, for example, a person who all of a sudden loses their smell now we'll find food way less appealing. Um, food is, is uh, the flavor of food is dominated by smell. There's a small component of uh, taste, and there's a small component that comes into the trigeminal system, things such as temperature and texture and uh, spicy hotness, kept, uh, what's what, the, for example, the, the perception that is elicited by uh, hot pepper, capsaicin, um, that comes in through the trigeminal nerve. But in a person who has a non-functional olfactory nerve, they don't have a big chunk of what they're used to getting from food. And so all of a sudden, food does not, uh, they'll tell you food doesn't taste right, what they, what they really mean is food doesn't smell right, the flavor is off, it is not appetizing, they have a hard time eating. And then uh, people that uh, acquire anosmia can go through various cycles where they have a hard time eating and then they, um, they eat or overeat in order to finally get some signals. They're trying to get signals, they can't get the signals through their nose, so they're getting signals, say, from their stomach by, um, uh, by overeating. Um, they're trying to, uh, they switch from foods that they pr previously preferred to foods that uh, uh, elicit responses in the trigeminal nerve, uh, spicy foods, um, et cetera. So uh, the, the uh, smells also pay, play a big role socially. Um, uh, sexual relations are changed by the lack of smell. Um, uh, and, and the experience of life is changed by a lack of smell. It is a very fundamental uh, contributor to our mood and our affect. And so people that lose the sense of smell are, are, are often extremely emotionally affected by this. If you ask people what is the most uh, devastating piece of not being able to smell, and this is, this is true of either acquired or anosmic, it, um, there, are, there are a lot of problems. The, for example, not being able to detect uh, rotten food or not being able to smell um, a fire and get to safety. Um, but one of the things that bothers people the most is not being able to know when they themselves have body odor. And so there's, a, there's an influence of this experience on their social interactions that is really problematic. Um, now, most people are not going to think that there is an anosmia because it's extremely rare. There is a condition where people are congenitally anosmic, and it's an extremely interesting condition. Um, 
uh, it's called Kalman syndrome. And in Kalman syndrome, the olfactory nerves don't develop. Okay, so they never develop, they never go into the cribriform plate. There's nothing to go there because they don't develop. The interesting thing is that along those olfactory nerves, a group of neurons enter the, the nervous system. These are GNRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, cells that are gonna in, uh, become resident within the hypothalamus. But they're made outside of the nervous system and they actually migrate into the uh, central nervous system. And they migrate along the olfactory nerves. So as a result, people with Kalman syndrome can't smell, and they also don't have these GNRH neurons. What's the consequence of not having a GNRH, GNRH neuron? Is that you cannot enter into puberty naturally. Okay, so these are the neurons that at the appropriate time start to become active and promote the release of gonadotropin uh, hormone and that, that sets puberty into motion. So these people will not sexually mature. Now that can be fixed. So once a person is identified, they're not going into, uh, into puberty, they're not developing. Um, you might also see that they don't have smell and then they can be given exogenous hormones to enter them into puberty. The message that I want to I, I want to leave you with, as far as the first cranial nerve, the olfactory cranial nerve, is that problems with with olfaction are are relatively rare, but they are one of those uh, one of those types of problems that are pre repeatedly misdiagnosed and re repeatedly misunderstood thought to be minor, thought to not be very important. And what I would urge you to do is to remember that not being able to smell is a big deal. It would be lovely if people that can't smell either from uh, because of a congenital condition or an acquired condition could get diagnosed earlier rather than after repeated uh, failures to be diagnosed um, and to have some understanding for the experiences of, of, of these individuals. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the optic nerve.